Hello everyone, Robert Rambles here, and welcome back to WoW Classic and the Season of Mastery. We are in the Hinterlands today, and as you can tell by my character's level, we have done a few things off recording. In fact, the only thing that I've really been focused on trying to record recently has been dungeon runs, because the questing at this level has uh, become really thin spread. So we've been having to go to a zone, do a quest, go to another zone, do two quests, and basically fly all around the map to knock out very, very distant and disparate quests. And that is just something that in this level range you have to do. It isn't very fun for me. I much prefer taking on three quests at the same time, even two quests at the same time. If they're going to have follow-ups, I don't mind that. Uh, but all the stuff where I'm having to run around to very distant places to do fetch quest and do single kill quest and things like that, I've been trying to take care of a lot of that on my own, uh, off of recording, because I don't have fun doing it. And if I don't have fun doing it, even though you guys might not find it boring, you're going to be able to tell that I'm not having a good time with it. And that isn't really content that I have felt like putting out there into the world. Um... Because that kind of questing is kind of a drag, and and I get pretty bummed out about having to do that kind of questing. So I just try to get it done, and I've been trying to force my way through it with mixed success. Uh, that being said, we had a really good Zulfarak run the other day. I have to do one more Oldaman run, and at least one more Zulfarak run for the quest. But yeah, I've gotten us to level 47. And when I look at our gear, I'm actually pretty pleased with all the runs I've been doing. I've done a lot of Oldaman. Uh, but as you can see, we've got blue in most of our slots, and that's definitely not something I've been able to say before in Classic. So that part of it has actually worked out really well. It's just that getting through the questing that we have to get through has been the really tedious and challenging part, as you guys who have made it into this level range before definitely know. <laughs> I kind of thought it would be different for the Season of Mastery. Uh, but it, it's shaping up to feel very similar. Uh, this is our quest log right now. We have an elite quest in Badlands we're probably not going to do. We have an elite quest in Feralist that we're probably not going to do. Uh, and I say probably not going to do when I have looked for a group for the quest for a while and I haven't been able to find a group. That's why I say stuff like we're probably not going to be able to do it. Uh, I have some fetch quests I still have to run around and do, and then we have these three quests here in the Hinterlands. This is the first time that I've had three quests to do in one area in many, many days. And so this is why this is the first questing video we've had in many, many days. So yeah, that's what we're working on today. I'm really hoping that once we get into level 50, level 52, we'll be able to go places like Ungoro Crater and Western Plaguelands. And I'm hoping that there will be a wealth of quests there to do so that we can uh, do a bunch of stuff all together in one area. And to me, that's a lot more enjoyable. Also, if it's a zone that I haven't quested in before, like a lot of the stuff in Western Plaguelands, Eastern Plaguelands, and Unguro, I'm not going to remember any of that stuff because the last time I did that stuff was probably sometime around the original Burning Crusade. Uh, and even then, I remember I was questing with a friend, and they had done all the quests before, and they pretty much just let me follow them through everything. Not putting them on follow, but basically the two of us running around grabbing all the quests and doing them, and, you know, playing with somebody who already knows the quest, you don't read them. So I'm really looking forward to getting into those areas, really reading the quest text, and just having a good time. But, uh, we have three or four levels to grind out before we get to that point. So that is part of what we're working on today. Uh, that and probably some more dungeon runs. I think we can do Maradon soon. Maybe I should wait more until level 49, 50. Uh, but I think pretty soon we'll be able to do at least one wing of Maradon. I remember it being split between different colored wings. Although Maradon is another dungeon like Zulfarak that I haven't done in Classic at all. These are dungeons that I did way back in the day. Uh, probably did them all the way up through Wrath of the Lich King because I, I leveled quite a few characters in Wrath. I had a level 80 of every class except for Rogue and Warlock. So I'm pretty sure you know, I ran a bunch of those dungeons back then, but 
I don't really remember them, so we'll see how tanking places like Maradon goes. I've already kind of felt the challenge of learning dungeons like Uldaman. Especially as a tank, people just kind of expect you to know your way around. It's funny, even when you tell a group, I don't know my way around, they will literally still wait for you to lead the way. Uh, it's, <laughs> it's been quite an interesting experience. Uh, being a tank that doesn't really know 100% all the dungeon routes. And honestly, I could look that stuff up and probably even have a cool add-on to tell me what route to take. I don't want to do that. That is just not something I enjoy. I don't enjoy dual screening and having to have a map up on my other screen. I don't enjoy having to run an add-on to tell me which way to go in a dungeon, left or right. So I just kind of fumble through it naturally. And so far it's been fine. It's, it's led to some confusing moments for groups, I think. And for me too, definitely, but... Uh, but we've gotten through it. Looks like these wildkin feathers are gonna be a... Oh, look, okay. So, <clears throat> as you guys probably know, apparently the wildkin feathers are not gonna drop from the owl beast. Uh, they are gonna be littered throughout the zone. Glad that we realized that now. It's The quest actually sounds like you're gonna get them as drops. If I can even find the quest. Here we go. The beasts are rumored to have been created by a loon, and I am interested in finding if this is really the truth. Recently, I heard about a population of wildkin living in the hinterlands. Vicious, primitive, and savage owl beasts. Will you gather some wildkin feathers for me? Okay, so we're not gathering them off of the wildkin themselves. We are just looking for them on the ground. I have really enjoyed running dungeons. I, I didn't originally think that I would enjoy doing multiple dungeons of the same run, uh, but I had a lot of fun learning the ins and outs of Uldaman over a few different runs. Looking forward to running Zulfarak a couple more times. The problem with it is if, if you're not working on quests that are in the dungeon, then you're sort of wasting your time. At the very least, you're, you're not being efficient with your time because the kill quest experience doesn't compare anymore to the experience of doing quests. But, when you have one quest to do in a zone, and then you have to travel across half the world to do another quest, that's not really time efficient either. So I've just been kind of doing the dungeons and trying to have a good time, trying to wrap up some quests, and not get too caught up on the idea that I should probably just be questing it out. Because questing it out at this level range, for me, looking at my quest log, like, just isn't really working. Lots of travel time between quests. So, I'm just doing everything I can to kind of get through this little slump. And luckily, I was able to get together three quests here in the Hinterlands. But even these three quests, like, one of them turns into Root Theron Village. One of them is not even a quest. That you would pick up anywhere in this zone. It was part of a chain that I don't even remember where it started. So there's that.
We also have to search the Altar of Zul down here, so I'm gonna kinda head in this way. I, I don't know if we're looking for a specific item or if we're just trying to get a ping for investigating it. Let's see if we can find out. I see some action going on over here. Looks like lightning bolts, so... I guess some of these guys are probably shamans. Maybe fighting a hunter? Don't see the player. There he is. 46 dwarf hunter. I think I just want to fight our way in the front door here. Especially if he's going that way, that could help out a lot. For some reason the music always seems loud to me in this zone, and it's like kind of weird ambient sounds more than it is anything else. And it has a tendency to get like really really loud and then really really quiet. So you guys let me know about the sound settings here because, uh, what did we just get? Troll, tribal, and necklace. What is that? Okay, apparently it is just an item for us to sell. Kind of looked like an item that would start a quest. I don't think I've ever been on top of this idol before. It's very reminiscent of the pyramid at the end of Zulfarak. In fact, it might be the exact same in-game structure. Lots of guys up here, lots of guys. Uh, let's see how we can help without getting ourselves killed. Uh, you guys are level 50. Oh, you're elites. Uh, group? Oh god. <laughs> Bad. Bad choice. Alright, so maybe we're not going to be able to do this one uh, if it requires getting all the way up there and searching for something. It doesn't say that it's an elite quest or a group quest or anything like that. Search for the Griven Child. I, I have to assume that they're going to be keeping him in a cage at the very top. I didn't really get a good look while we were up there for that brief, terrifying moment, but I'm thinking he's going to be up there. Not really a lot of people here. Uh, we could try to do a looking for more. The Altar of Zul. We can try that and see if that yields any results, but if it doesn't, I don't see how we possibly fight our way up there on our own. Seemed like those guys were level 50, at least a couple of them were. Starting to think the best way to find these feathers is probably going to be mounted. And yeah, I have no idea why I have such a hard time finding these herbs in the game world. It's probably old age and clutter. Let's see here. If we were to go into the graphics and reduce the ground clutter around to what we might have actually had back in 2004 or 2005, well, it might not be any easier to spot. 
Yeah, I don't like over clutter. It kind of gets to a point where it's uh, overwhelming and it doesn't really add too much for me. But I don't think in this case I could blame it on the clutter. I think in this case it's probably just blindness. I'm feeling like we could find these anywhere in the central part of the zone. They could be spread around the entire zone. I haven't really been keeping track in the past of when I've seen them. Uh, because I was kind of convinced that it was a horde-only quest. You'd think we'd have a chance of finding the feathers anywhere we see Owlkin. Owl beasts, rather. And part of me still wonders if they have a chance to drop the items at all. We can come up here and work on some of the green sludges. And hopefully Jade Oozes will be around here as well. I think now that we're level 47, we could do stuff in the Searing Gorge, so I'll probably make my way over there after I finish up here in the Hinterlands. That just occurred to me. We could do Searing Gorge stuff. Maybe that'll get us to 50 with a few dungeon runs thrown in there for good measure. Uh, we might be able to do Maradon at 48 or 49. I don't think we could do Sunken Temple until level 50 or 52. But yeah, maybe with the combination of dungeons and quest in Searing Gorge, maybe that'll get us to 50. And then we could talk about hitting Ungoro Crater and the Western Plaguelands. But yeah, we'll see how it goes. Uh, once we're in an area with more interesting quests or content that I have just never seen before, uh, then we'll probably be doing a few more questing videos more frequently. But for right now and probably through the, the Christmas holiday, I don't know how much I'll be recording. Uh, outside of trying to do... Uh, I was thinking about maybe recording one more Uldaman run and one more Zulfarak run. Just to see if there's any variants. I also would like to get into a group that has the mallet for Zulfarak. One of you guys mentioned that the the mallet was here somewhere in the Hinterlands. Uh, but I haven't gotten a quest for it yet. Maybe it'll come from one of the quests we're currently working on. I'm not sure. Alright, we pulled a buddy here. Let's go ahead and sweeping strikes. Uh, I don't really want to die, and we don't have potions, so I'm going to go ahead and use Retaliation as well. That should finish this up pretty quickly. Yeah, if we had a potion, then I could just rely on Sweeping Strikes, but let's see. Oh, we can make some, because I'm really attentive. We're running out of Cadgar's Whisker, though. I could buy some. We have 78 gold, and we're probably nowhere near ever getting epic uh, mount speed. And honestly, I don't really know how much I care. So yeah, if we need to buy some, we can. I could go back and farm some, but you know, it's time. The whole time is money thing is real. Unfortunately, unfortunately, that is the society that we inhabit, most of us. Some variant of capitalism. I'm noticing that we are finding all the jade oozes and we are not finding any green... Oh, we're finding green sludges and not jade oozes, yep. Yeah. We're finding the one and not the other is the point. So I'm guessing they're going to be in a different location. Maybe they'll be over here a little bit to the east where we see this other building.
It would probably be a good idea to bandage up. And we are out of the roasted quail, unfortunately. We have some level 35 food, soft banana bread. Not as good, but uh, absolutely better than nothing. Okay, uh, well, hmm. I want to kill the one, so I'm going to pop the potion, and then we're going to kill the one and run away. There we go, and now let's try to get out of here with our with our life, basically, and avoid another spirit run, because the spirit run is a little far. It's all the way over on the eastern side of the zone near the Horde camp. Basically right north of the Horde camp. And now we'll do what we should have done before that combat. We will heal up. And uh, I'm definitely underestimating these guys' ability to body pull. I'm getting far too close when, in fact, I should be charging for rage. Okay, let's eat a little bit, and then hopefully we'll get our last two here without a hitch. And then we can go hunt down the Jade Ones. Which, I feel like we ran past them the last time we were here, so we should be able to find them pretty easily. It's actually a really small zone. I feel like it's even smaller than Red Ridge, and Red Ridge felt pretty small when we were in it. Red Ridge, as well as Lock Modan, both felt like really small zones compared to uh, larger ones like Duskwood and obviously Stranglethorn. Alright, let's head out to the east. Like I said, I, I think our best bet is maybe to search this other structure, whatever it happens to be, and see if that's where they're at. If not there, then, then maybe just further east. Uh, no, we got trolls here. Vile branch scalpers. Scalper. Scalper. Lots of scalpers. Okay, they like their scalps. Got it. Let's keep going. Skull Rock. Yeah, yeah, here we go. Skull Rock. Sounds like a place where you would find oozes. Sounds like a likely place. And I really can't tell the difference. Are these guys a little bit bigger or a little bit darker shade of green than the other ones? Or is there like no significant difference other than their name?
After doing a bunch of dungeons, I really feel like they missed an opportunity to incentivize that content. I feel like they should have offered some kind of bonus experience for clearing a dungeon. Uh, like how you would get in the dungeon auto dungeon queue in retail, how you get that bonus experience at the end. I feel like if you did that, and then obviously you do the same thing that you do with the kill experiences, you make it so that you only get that experience if you are at level and everybody in the group is at level with the dungeon content. So that way you couldn't take like a level 50, couldn't go through and pull somebody through SFK and keep doing that to clear it and get the bonus XP. They wouldn't get the bonus XP unless it was a five man group and everyone in the group was at level with it. Well, I guess you could four man it. I guess it, oh God, <laughs> let's run. Robert, talk less, look more. Bye bye. Yeah, I feel like they just missed an opportunity because, man, I would probably run a lot more dungeons if we can get that bonus experience by completing it with an at-level group. That would be amazing. I find that for me, it's such a great thing for me to do when I want to play the game, but I'm just burned out on questing, is just to go run a dungeon. Maybe that'll be something they look at doing in a future season. The season of dungeons. Something like that. Uh, these wolves that are in stealth, we have to be really careful because... You really can't see them until you are quite close. And by then it's often too late. I was kind of hoping we can go into the cave here, but uh, there's only green sludges in there and not jade oozes, so I guess that's a no-go. We have a horde supply crate here that we can click on. I don't know if this is for a quest, or maybe it starts a quest, or maybe it literally has some horde supplies in it. It has some food. Uh, level 35 food? Well, we'll keep it because I am uh, sometimes forgetful when it comes to resupplying our food, so we'll keep a hold of it. Let's see, we need to be a little bit careful here. There's some guys close by that we don't need. Yeah, we aggroed him anyway. Hmm. Seems typical.
I've given some thought to trying out uh, a Fury build if we get another really awesome one-hander like this one. Uh, it could be worth checking out. Right now I would be loath to give up the Rock Pounder, but uh, if we do happen to get another one-hander, it could be something just to uh, try something new for a little bit. We have been arms now for 47 levels, so quite some time. I guess we've only technically been arms for 37 levels, um, but yeah. That could be something different to check out. Uh, my Night Elf Warrior ended his journey as Fury, and that was enjoyable. I remember liking it. It's just very often much easier to get a good two-hander to drop than to worry about getting two good one-handers to drop. But we've had a lot of luck with drops. I shouldn't jinx it, but I have to say it because it's been true. As far as getting gear, we've had really good luck with drops. Uh, like I said, when I look at my character and we're basically wearing all blues, that's unheard of for me. So, that that's a pretty good feeling. And at this point, I really have to say that for everybody who is kind of worried that maybe the faster leveling would take away that classic experience. And by classic experience, people really mean like the fact that it takes a long time. Uh, it doesn't take it away. It's still a significant amount of time, you know. Obviously, it's shorter, right? It's 40% shorter. Potentially 40% shorter, depending on how you quest and how efficient you are. But yeah, it's... We didn't have a single time when we outleveled a zone, really, that we needed to go to. Um, and now we're back at that same point by level 47 where we are kind of dry on quest. It happened a little bit later than it happened to my human priest. So we're probably going to be able to save it by going into the Searing Gorge. And just, like I said, more, more of me running around to far corners of the world to do one quest at a time will eventually get us to level 50. And then I think once we're level 50... Between Ungoro Crater and Eastern Plaguelands, I I'm really hoping that we can just have a ton of quests to do. Just a ton of things to do in a zone would be great. I feel like they should also change it so that if you pick up a quest in one zone and the objective for that quest is in another zone, you should get substantially more experience for doing it. That would probably make the, the time that you have to spend, you know, getting on a boat, sitting out the flight points. That would definitely make it worth it. I've just learned that I need to save all of those things for when I'm, when I'm doing other work. And I can just put myself on a flight and fly myself somewhere. You know, or get myself on the tram, then get myself on a flight. I, I've just picked times where I'm doing other stuff to get those kinds of quests done. Because, yeah, it's a, literally just a lot of running around. It's a lot of running around during a part of the leveling process that already kind of feels slow. Alright, 10 out of 10 and 10 out of 10. I don't think we're going to be able to search the altar. I don't think we ever... Yeah, I never got any messages back. I know I'm really good at watching this, but I didn't... usually it lights up and I I've learned to kind of look down there every once in a while. Uh, but no, nobody responded to our plea for the altar of Zul, so I think we just need to run around and try to collect the rest of these feathers that are just very sparse. And it's kind of hard to tell how far to the east we should really go and still expect to find these things. Like, we haven't seen any on our run to the south. Let's peel into the west a little bit. And basically, we need to be seeing Owlkin. And if we're not, then we could probably assume we're not going to find the feathers. And the question is, how many feathers am I going to ride by that you guys will see uh, in the video that I will just completely miss? Th look at these guys patrolling the road, three of them. 
ready to stomp out of existence anybody who happens by. Level 51 Shaman? Yeah, I think he can handle some level 46s. Uh, most likely he's fine. And if he's not fine, that's too bad. He's the opposite faction, and now we have to deal with this wolf. And yeah, still no feathers to be seen. I, part of me wants to kill some more of these guys to see if they drop the item. The other part of me says that it wouldn't be on the ground and able to be picked up from a body, so... Maybe we'll have to fight some of them to clear to get to the feathers and that could tell us definitively. And yeah, sorry in advance if my scanning with the camera is nauseating. I, I feel like I don't know what this will look like to watch when I'm scanning to the left and right like this. I'm also kind of worried about how far out these things are even going to render. I have the render distance obviously maxed out. I mean, but I don't know how far that gets me when it comes to stuff on the ground. And the thing about it is, we need 15 of them, so it's not really a small number. We need quite a few. And then there's, you know, other players who are also probably picking them up as they see them. If they're in this zone, they, they might be working on this same quest, so... Yeah, so here is where we would find one as soon as we aggro something. Makes perfect sense. And it works out. We're getting kind of boring just to run around in circles or zigzag through a zone. And I'm sure it's this kind of quest where people like fight the urge to tell me to use a questing add-on. Because I'm positive that in one of those add-ons, uh, you could probably just make it so that it marks where these things are at, the same way it would mark an herb or a mining node. Gotta believe that uh, we have the technology to make it possible. Sungrass makes for a good excuse to kill another one of these things, and we can cross our fingers. I know it's a long shot, but I would love to see it drop off of these. And then we can just go on an owl beast spree and just wipe them all out of the hinterlands. 
Maybe after we take out 40 or 50, we'll have 15 feathers. Uh, it's not to be, not yet at least. I just love seeing all the different statuses stack below them. I often just want to get a thunderclap off so it adds another one. It's fun. Maybe we'll do an orc warlock for the next season. That might be fun. I said I would never do a mage again, but I, I really did enjoy my time on both my gnome warlock while it lasted and the blood elf warlock that were they were both really enjoyable. And then we can go tailoring and chanting. That might be fun, a warlock with tailoring and enchanting. An orc. Maybe an undead. Maybe we do it. Maybe we do a forsaken warlock. Yeah, I know. I shouldn't be talking about the next season when we're level forty-seven and struggling to quest. But you gotta dream. You gotta have dreams to move forward. I think. As distant as they may be. Sometimes healthy to think ahead. Don't know why I keep misclicking that, but I have. I've been consistently misclicking my mount button and pressing bandage instead. Wow, that, that Owlkin is uh, sprinting rather fast. Is he chasing someone or resetting? Um, yeah, he must have been resetting. That was quite a speed for him to be moving at on like a normal path or anything like that. It's a little bit unnerving. Let's try to be careful here. I don't think they're going to put them too close to the lodge. about their placement. We haven't had to fight in order to get too many of them. Which I'm surprised about.
Are we going to aggro this wolf? No. Oh, we must be like a foot away. Yeah. Let's not tempt fate. And we have found our way all the way back down near the altar of Zul. Oh, we ran right into that one. Right into him. Uh, and there is a feather there too. Let's pull the wolf back. We'll take care of him first. And then if we have to, we'll take care of this owl beast after that. The wolves keep getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Well, we were having some decent luck for a minute there. We were on a bit of a connecting streak. And now we haven't found any. And we just need two more, so... Hmm. Though, right where we're at, I'm not really seeing any Owlkin. I, I guess we have to take that as an indicator that they're not going to be uh, dropping any feathers in this area. So let's turn around and generally head back the way we came. Yeah, they don't seem to hang out in like really close proximity to trolls, which I guess makes sense. The trolls would probably clear them out of their general aggro radius. Uh, from like a lore perspective, obviously not from like a game mechanics perspective, guys. No, I don't really think the game mechanics work that way. But, justifying why there wouldn't be any owlkin near the trolls, something else. Ah, uh, still no feathers. Yeah, I just feel like maybe there are other players that are snatching them up around us and ahead of us. Not really any way to be sure.
I mean, at least it's a pretty beautiful zone. Uh, of all the places that we would have to run around in circles, at least it's a pleasant place. The weather's nice. It seems like it's probably a moderate temperature out. Sun is shining through a thin haze. Could be much, much worse. We could be doing circles in, like, the Badlands. Uh, or in the Searing Gorge, which we might have to be doing soon, though. Sometimes I can't spend a lot of time in those more desolate places. It starts to grate on my nerves. Ah, uh, wait a minute. You are a feather. You are a shaman, though. Let's outrange you, and then we'll deal with the guy that's actually in our way. Because I would really like to finish this quest up. As a matter of fact. Oh no you don't. Are you going for our feather, man? Don't go for our feather. Yeah, that's right. You get out of here. That feather's claimed. Chase you off. They probably weren't going for the feather at all. Uh, because if they were going for the feather, they probably would have just grabbed the feather. So, But I did, I did feel a spike of fear. Sharp and real. Alright, excellent. Can we find one more? One more little feather. With a train of three people running by? I mean, I hope they're not on the quest we are. Oh, it looks like they just came down from the, uh... From the tower. I wonder if everything up here is dead. Does that mean that we can get credits, or do we need to actually fight one of the guys? Uh, let's see. Oh, look at that! We got we got credit! Let's get out of here. Oh, that was great. I think there was a horde group, too, that we took advantage of there. I don't even really remember where that turns in at. Oh, it turns in here. Okay, perfect. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Well timed. All that running in circles, it all paid off because Destiny brought us right into that moment where that horde group had cleared them out and we were able to run up there, casually get our quest completed. So yeah, alright, perfect. Can't help but feel good about that. But yeah, it would feel better if we just can now get our last feather without too much more effort. Not sure if they're going to be around the lake, but we do have Owlkin over here, so... Alright, and we have a spider. Apparently the Witherbark are training giant spiders. That's basically terrifying. Basically really terrifying. Oh, look at that. Look at that, and so close to uh, to home. At least to where we can turn in these quests. See, that felt pretty good. What was that? I mean, maybe less than an hour, and we were able to knock out three quests. Uh, that is kind of the pace that I enjoy. If we can take an hour, and we can do three or four quests, that is perfect. It's where it takes an hour to do one quest, uh, you know, and, and it's not even that, but more so when, like, it's an hour, but 40 minutes of it is traveling. Uh, either back to turn it in, or from where you picked it up to go do it, like, then that's where it starts to be, uh, really, really inefficient. But I, I think in those times when I really want to play, but I just can't stand the quest, I think I'm gonna keep doing dungeon runs. I like wearing all blues. And uh, with as much gear as been dropping, I think it's totally worth it to do those runs. Even though it's not the best way to get experience, if, if it's what keeps you leveling and keeps you grinding, then uh, for me at least, I think that's the way to go. And now I'm getting to a point where I'm doing stuff that I haven't done in a long time, so it's much more interesting because it's like seeing it new again with different eyes. 
I was surprised at how much of Zulfarak I actually remembered. Uh, I think one of these turns into the dwarf, I thought. Yeah, inside here. And then the other one turns in up top. Here there. Uh, weird, a little bit of quest lag. Don't think that's on my end. No, I'm fine. Hey, good. Talk to me. You've done it already, but we'll continue. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. I wonder. He's not going to give me experience for that, though, is he? Hmm. Can we farm these for XP? I, I doubt it. I don't think they typically have quests that you can farm for XP like that. Well, that would be amazing, though, if we could. Yeah, if you guys if you guys know what is the reward for doing that over and over again because I mean potentially we could do it. I mean listen, I played New World for like 30 hours, so I, I can I can farm the same objectives over and over again and over and over and over again for a while. <laughs> we, we, no problem there. We can do it. Uh, if if it's a thing we can do. And then I think this one has to turn in back here to the to the main guy who runs the show with the Griffins. Don't know what his name is. Oh, this is Altar of Zul. And then the Wild Conf Oh yeah, the Wild Conf Feathers go to Root there in Village. Uh, and then, okay, he has a follow-up. Take this feather to Thaddeus Grimshade, the Diviner. Diviner? He left Airy Peak years ago to pursue darker knowledge, but in his heart he is still a wild hammer, and perhaps his talents can help us find Sharpbeak. This feather was taken from the nest where the griffin child sleeps. If you give it to Thaddeus, then with luck he can use his div divining magics to find Sharpbeak. He's in Netherguard Keep, in the Blasted Lands. Okay, uh, it might be a while until we head out there to do that. And then I have to get the other one turned in and root there in a village. So that's going to be a flight point and then a boat ride <laughs> and then another flight uh, to get that one turned in. So I am going to take care of that one on my own, guys. I think after I get that all turned in, I'm going to head over to the Searing Gorge. What's on your mind? And I'm going to try to find the quest there. I'm probably just going to look up where the quest givers are, which is not something I usually do, but... I feel like in this case, it's probably going to be the smartest thing just to find where the quest givers are at before I go into the zone. So at least we have that to help us. Uh, and if they are at level with where we're at, we will be in the Searing Gorge next time. So let me know what you guys think. Really appreciate all the support you've continued to show the series. It does mean the world to me. So take care of yourselves out there and take care of each other. And we will see you back in Azeroth sometime soon. Bye now.